Welcome to Clue 1 of the GeoGradient MCAL. This is a second Clue 1 video uh, that's a, a different set of instructions. I'm going to walk you through a new version of the PDF that you should have received as a PDF update, version 3 of Clue 1. So in this video, I'm going to show you the techniques of this new version. And if you're just joining the knit along and wondering what's going on, why is there another PDF update? What happened to the original set of instructions? The original set of instructions was omitted from the new Clue 1 version. So I'm pivoting this MCAL and taking it into a new Clue 1 direction. I haven't done this before in a previous MCAL, but it is necessary and important to do so this year uh, because it was um, brought to my attention when I released the Clue 1 on Thursday that the geometric motif of those original instructions resembled a swastika. A hate symbol, which was obviously not the intention, and I was embarrassed that I didn't even realize such a resemblance, and I decided to omit those instructions and uh, refocus on a new shape and a new version for this knit along as we move forward with it, and uh, the reason for that is it's not so much about exactly what the lines and shapes are exactly identical to this symbol, it's about the resemblance of it and that it was um, not, yeah, not appropriate. And uh, it was hurtful and harmful. And it doesn't matter whether you saw that resemblance or not, if you saw a pinwheel or a knot or a, I don't see that, they, they can just go on. I don't see that thing. Yeah, if you see it, then that's not what it is. I'm not holding space for those types of comments. And that's not what this knit along is about. So, if you uh, have started that original Clue 1 instruction, there's a new version. And don't worry if you're still working on that clue or even if you finished, there's plenty of yarn left over. You're going to have plenty of yarn to knit the entire new version of the shawl. Um, so the most important thing is uh, for me with this knit along is uh, to let you all know about the new Clue 3 PDF update, that there is a new version and uh, this is the shape. Uh, spoiler alert, this week it... I think really important to have a spoiler and know what it is that you're knitting. So if you're knitting and watching this new video and not knowing what the shape looks like yet, I would definitely uh, know that and that there has been feedback about it resembling this symbol and that's not okay. And it doesn't matter whether it looks like it to you or not. It matters that it does to some people and they are part of this community and their feelings and experiences are not to be just brushed off. So that's not what uh, we're going to keep going on with this knit along. We're pivoting, we're reworking. Knitting is all about reworking, getting creative, modifying, ripping. It's all part of knitting and uh, moving forward with something different. And by listening and being more informed, we can make something even more welcoming and more beautiful, okay? So version three is what we're gonna be learning in this uh, tutorial. You can skip ahead with the timestamps linked down below if you wanna watch the techniques. But uh, this is the new clue one of the version three PDF that you have. It's knitted in the round from the center outward. So it's the same square shape the most important thing for getting into the other clues of this knit along, we're going to keep doing clues two, three, and four as planned. You need to have 85 stitches on each side of your square at the end. There's going to be 340 total stitches. Okay, so that's the version three, and it's a center out construction. It's much simpler, and I want us to think about this simple square as an opportunity to play with color, and it's a really relaxing garter stitch beginning. And just as much that we learn about techniques and uh, new ideas in this knit along, I want us also to learn to listen and to empathize and to respect and not gloss over uh, important issues or harm that people feel from things. So I like to think about this new simple square as an opportunity to relax and set up a new foundation for the more intricate and uh, varied clues and techniques to come. So let's knit each stitch of this new version three and the stripes, and we're just gonna knit empathy and kindness and respect and uh, all of those good things into every stitch of version three. So it begins with colors A through D, A, B, C, D. If you wanna adjust the color sequence, I'll be putting lots of modification ideas in the official Ravelry MCAL 2023 group. There's an alternatives thread 
that I'm linking down below. So if you wanna see what other people have done to this clue, um, it might take a day or two for some people to knit some cool versions. So if you're like, ooh, Steven, that's different. Okay, I don't know. I don't know about that. Just have some patience and maybe wait a day or two and see what other people do to it. And maybe they give you a cool idea and go, ooh, I didn't think about that. Let me add a mohair dare or let me put some eyelets in that stripe. But what I wrote down in the version three PDF is all you need to get going for the rest of the shawl. And in the grand scheme of things, clue one is the foundation, the beginning. But what you're gonna see the most of when you wrap the scarf around are clues three and four at the end. So if this feels a little simple for you, trust me, okay? We're gonna have enough yarn, keep on going. And uh, clues three and four are the most exciting parts. I designed the shawl to have a crescendo of technique and uh, shaping ideas. So uh, starting simple, next week we're gonna do a little more. Week three is gonna get real exciting, some beautiful textures going on, and week four is my absolute favorite, and that's what you're gonna see the most of, okay? So I encourage you to give this new simple start a try and apply your own creative color ideas to it. What if instead of from A to D, you went A, B, C, D, and then went back down C, B, A? So instead of doing A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, you could go A, B, C, D, and then oh, reverse the colors to have this like oh, ooh, crescendo. You could change the widths of the stripes. So many fun things. When there's some beautiful, simple shape like this, it's really easy to apply your own striping sequences, extra color pops. That's what the MCAL is all about. And if you've started the first version of the clue and you've knitted part of it and you're like, I wanna keep these sections and go somewhere else with it. There's lots of modification ideas in the spoiler Ravelry thread. You could try a big color block or try a big triangle after it. If you've knitted the entire original Clue One from Thursday, October 5th's update, if you have that original square from the Clue One PDF or the Clue Two, sorry, or the Clue One version two, PDF. If you have that finished original version knitted, don't worry about wasting yarn, okay? When I finished my shawl, I had about 20 to 30 grams left over of each color, and I did a really cool optional treatment to them at the end of the design to use all my yarn up. But if you've already knitted your yarn up and you're like, I broke, I cut my yarn, I wove in all my ends, do I have to rip all that out? Just set it aside, okay? You're gonna have enough yarn to knit the shawl because at the end of the design, there's options to stop early, to add an extra stripe, to uh, extend the section and make it as big as you want with all your yarn. So just set it aside for now, okay? That's where I'm recommending um, we take this clue where I'm leading it forward. And I can't wait to show you these new techniques and it's gonna be full of modification ideas along the way, and the design just keeps getting better and better and better. So if you're sticking around, thank you so much for participating, and we're gonna make this a beautiful, welcoming shawl for everyone. So keep on watching for those techniques. Using A, cast on eight stitches. I put a link to Emily Ocker's circular cast on in version three of your PDF, of the Clue One PDF. So you could follow that version uh, or just do a long tail cast on. So I'm gonna do the long tail cast on, start off real nice and easy. So we're gonna use uh, the long tail slingshot position and I just place my needle on top of the yarn and give it a twist for the first stitch and then cast on stitch number two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. You can use any cast on you like. So just get eight stitches on your needle and make sure you've got the working tail of yarn connected to your ball. That's the one we're gonna work with. We'll, we'll do the magic loop method. If you like working with DPNs, you could work with DPNs for the beginning of this clue, or just pop that cord through the middle of your row. So between those four stitches. And then this is where the yarn is attached to this needle. So the yarn that's attached to the needle, we're gonna pull that to make a little second loop. So we got four stitches on the cord and then scooch these four stitches onto your left needle. So this is what we're looking at, eight stitches. The yarn is coming from the cord here and the four stitches are gonna be knitted on this left needle. Round one, knit one, make one, eight times. So knit one and pull it tight. 
and then make one using the backwards loop cast on. There we go, there's the make one. We're gonna do that eight total times. We're gonna do that eight total times. Here's the second knit one, make one, and knit one, make one for the third time. If you hold the yarn in your right hand, you're going to knit one and then twist the yarn like this to pop it onto the needle for a backwards loop cast on for the make one. Once you've done it four times, you're gonna slide the stitches onto your needle, other needle tip here, and then the stitches that you just worked, you're gonna pull on that needle to make another magic loop. So you got a loop here and a little cord loop there with your circular needle. So let's keep going. We need to do that four more times. I'll show you English style knitters. We, got, we have knit one and make one. Knit one and make one. Knit one, make one. And finally, knit one, make one for the eighth time. Don't worry if it feels a little loose or holy or funky in the beginning. We can sew it up later to tighten up that center after we get some rows done. So let's pull the needle through to make another cord. Round two, purl one, place marker, purl two, place marker, purl one, four times. So we're purling and placing markers. Purl one. I'm gonna use my little yarn stitch marker. Whoop. Purl two. Where's that second stitch? Oh, I think that was the make one. Sometimes it's tricky to see, so you can give it a little tug first. There it is. So purl one, purl two, and place marker. Purl one. And we're gonna do that four times. So we just did purl one, place marker, purl two, place marker, purl one. Repeat, purl one, place marker, purl two, one, and two. Place a marker. And purl one. So I did it two times. I've got four stitch markers. I gotta do it two more times. So the stitches that you just worked, pull that needle to make a magic loop, and then shift those stitches on to your other needle. And as you work more rows, it gets a little looser and easier to work. So I'll just have a little patience with this setup row. Purl one, place marker, purl two, one and two, place marker, purl one, place marker, and purl two. Oh, no, sorry. Was that right? Let's go. Yeah, purl one, place marker, purl two, and then purl one. Okay, pay close attention. Here we go. So we're at the last eight stitches. Got purl one, place marker, purl two, place marker, purl one, and repeat the parentheses. Purl one. We want two stitches between every marker. And we'll purl these two, one, two. This is the hardest part of the whole section. So once we get this, it'll be clear sailing. And purl the final stitch. You should have eight stitches on your needle. Just make sure that you see two stitches between the markers, two stitches between the markers. Here's a marker, Ooh, one stitch. There's the other stitch down there. Okay. Round three and four. We're gonna work rounds three and four to make a nice stripe to begin this center out square. 
And round three is an increase round. Knit one, slip marker, make one left. For the make one left, the left needle wants to go into the front of this little ladder. Just like that. So you could also use your right needle to loosen it up, but this is where the left needle goes in. You wanna go into the front of that ladder and knit that picked up stitch through the back loop. Make one left. Knit to marker. One, two, here's the next marker. Make one right. The left needle goes into the back. So I like to use my right needle to help pick it up. And there we go. And knit through the front for a make one right. Slip marker. And knit one. We're going to repeat all of that and we're, we will work it four total times. So we just did it once. So the parentheses begin with knit one, slip marker, make one left. If you hold the yarn in your right hand, you want the left needle to go into the front and then knit that picked up stitch through the back loop for a nice tight increase. Knit to marker, make one right, the left needle goes into the back, and you knit through the front loop. Slip marker, and knit one. So that was two times. Uh, one thing I forgot to show you, a split marker might come in handy. So I've got my markers. I want to just mark the beginning of my round. So you could use a little spare tail of yarn to tie onto the beginning of the round, but that helps you to remember as you keep going, where's the beginning of my round? It's right there. So pull on that needle that you just worked with, and we're going to do the same thing for these stitches. Knit one, slip marker, make one left, go into the front of that picked up ladder, knit through the back, and knit to marker, make one right, that left needle goes into the back. I think of the phrase, I'll be right back. Make one right, that left needle goes into the back. Twist it by knitting through the front. That was the make one right. Slip marker, knit one. Okay, one more time. Knit one, slip marker, make one left. Knit to marker, make one right. And slip marker, knit one. That is the end of round three. You should have eight stitches increased. You did eight increases. Ooh, I think I forgot to slip my little marker there. So try to keep your markers in the same place. So there's gonna be more stitches uh, becoming increased in some locations, but keep on following the, following the instructions closely as you knit with increases. In round four, we purl. Purl all of the stitches while slipping the markers. Purl one, slip marker, purl to the marker, slip marker. So this is an easy round, just purling. If you hold the yarn in your right hand, purl, throw the yarn around the needle, just like this. So these are the two rows for the entire section. It's really easy, so you can really focus on your colors, get those increases set up, and uh, you, you can feel free to customize the order of your colors. Try to use the colors quite equally. If you use some of your colors a little more than other colors in this section, then don't worry about it. But this is the beginning, and there's a little hole in the beginning, but we can close that up at the end. We can sew that up later. So we have some garter ridges. Keep on going, repeating rounds three and four, three more times. Repeat last two rows, 
two rounds three more times, resulting in five color A garter ridges. So we want five total ridges. We just did the first one. Do you see that little garter ridge right there, those garter bumps? That's the first one. And uh, we want five total. So keep on going and I'll see you for the next stripe. Once you have five color A garter ridges and 48 total stitches, it should look like this. And you can break color A leaving a tail, oh, about this long. <clears throat> and I'm gonna tidy up that little center hole. I mean, that's fun, that could be a cool feature, but I'm gonna close it up a little bit by putting that cast on tail of yarn onto my tapestry needle. And I'm just gonna do a little whip stitch around the cast on edge and just go into some of those bumps on the wrong side like this, and this is gonna help tighten up that little hole if you don't want it to be so obvious. So just go around. If you did that Emily Ocker's circular cast on, that makes a really nice invisible cast on for the center out. But this also works. This doesn't take too much time. Just a little surgery, tightening up, that's enough. Maybe one more bump to be safe. Oh, there we go. And then you can just pull it closed like that. And look at that. That fixes the little hole. If you have like looser stitches, mine are a little bit looser, and I'm okay with that. I like some of the, the stitches. If they're a little bit looser, it's just gonna make a drapey shawl there. But if they're extra loose for you, maybe your needle size, maybe you could try going down one needle size, or maybe you could continue taking that tail of yarn. And if there's like a little loose strand, maybe you could just like whoop, go up and down and do a little kind of a duplicate stitch action or just trace the path of a yarn and look at that. You could like kind of tighten it and pull it closed so that you could tighten up that first round as well if you want. But I'm gonna leave mine. I'm really happy with how that's looking. And if you have any other increase that you like, you could feel free to substitute your increases. Like what if you did yarn overs instead of make ones? You could have these beautiful eyelets decorating the increased corners of your square. So that was the first stripe with color A, and I'm looking at the right side. If you don't know what the right or the wrong side is, it also doesn't really matter yet, <laughs> until now. It matters now when, whenever you add a new color. So don't worry about if you lost track of what the right and the wrong side is. Keep on going. We're, we are going to repeat rounds three and four of the pattern repeat four times, resulting in four color B garter ridges with color B. So just keep on knitting. So as you knit that first stitch and slip the marker, we have our make one left. And I'm going to start doing the weave in Steven to weave in my ends as I knit. So you could take one or both tails of those broken yarns and cross it on top of each stitch for about 12 stitches or so. Now I'm knitting to the marker, knit and cross. Do the weave in Steven. You can do this every time you introduce a new color. Knit and cross. Knit and cross. Knit and cross. So I'm gonna do that all the way to the marker at least. And don't worry, that yarn's not gonna fall out. I do this for all of my shawls. And this is just one method of weaving in ends. You could weave them in at the end or if you have another method, all right, make one right. Make one right before the marker. Slip marker, knit one, and repeat. Knit one. I wanna keep doing my weave in Steven. Slip marker, make one left. Weave in Steven. I'll do that for a couple more stitches. I'm knitting to the marker. All right, that's enough. So that's gonna trap the yarn tail on the wrong side, and it looks like that. So give it a try. If you don't wanna do that, then try another method of weaving in ends, but I love this one because it keeps your work tidy, and then when you finish the section, you're ready for the next clue, and you don't have to do any finishing. So keep on going with color B, and I'm going to do that for four garter ridges. So now from here for the rest of the square, you're gonna have four garter ridges, 
Spoiler alert, here we go. You saw this at the beginning of the video. This is what we're doing. Four garter ridges now. Color A, that was five garter ridges to get set up. But now with every color, color A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. Just follow your color sequence. And to get a version like this beautiful green gradient, you're gonna do A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, A, and finish with B. It doesn't matter what color you finish with for the border of your shawl. So if you wanna change your color order or knit the recommended number of rows and get that stitch count at the end, you could do two row stripes. Or what if you even do, ooh, you could, instead of color blocks, you could do two rows of A, two rows of B, two rows of A, two rows of B, getting a garter ridge of each color, and then you could do two rows of B, two rows of C, two rows of B, two rows of C, and then stripe, stripe, stripe. So you could stripeify it, you could do A, B, C, D, and then for the next stripe, you could do C again, and then B, and then A, and then B, and then C, and then well, for however many stripes you have. But basically get creative with your colors. And in the spoiler thread of the Ravelry group, and there's also an alternatives thread linked down below where you can see these little illustrations, see people's progress, see some little blank illustrations that might help you color in the lines and imagine your own striping sequence. Like what if you did A, B, C, D, and a color opportunity Ooh, in mohair, why not? So get creative. This is a really simple frame for you to customize and it's such a simple beginning so you can relax. And then what if you put like a little eyelet every time you do a new color? If you feel comfortable modifying and doing your own thing, that's what the knit along is all about. But if you're worried and wondering, oh, I don't know if I'm, if I can do an extra pop or if I can do an extra stitch, I might mess up, then just follow what I wrote. But I love it when you throw in different textures or maybe like you could do three ridges instead of four ridges of every color. And then maybe the fourth ridge is like a color opportunity. And you could like frame after every single stripe, you could like do an extra color pop from your stash or a mohair dare. <gasps> That would be beautiful. Maybe even a mohair dare in eyelets or a mohair dare in a stockinette stitch. Ooh, that's so fun. The most important thing is to keep those increases going and you have the four corners being formed for the shawl and the stitch count. Okay, keep on repeating the rows closely as written. These are all of the techniques. At the end of the section, you want 85 stitches on each side of your square. So you want 85 stitches here, 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 and here for 340 stitches total. This is what you're aiming for. So whatever you do as you repeat the rows, you can do whatever colors you want, any modifications, and make it extra special. And when in doubt, just keep it simple, because in the grand scheme of things, this is a small part of the overall shawl, and it just forms the framework to really build and explore and expand with the amazing techniques to come. So where are we gonna go next? Are we gonna go here, over here, everywhere, somewhere? Are we gonna fold it in half? Oh my gosh, I have no idea. I'm getting so many ideas. So that's what the MCAL is all about. Get inspired, support each other in the Ravelry group, and be kind and uplifting, sharing your ideas. And I hope this uh, new version gets you inspired with your colors, and we ignite some gorgeous new ideas for Clue 1. So we've got our little beginning. It's a small start that can expand and radiate outwards. And as I was filming this video, I was checking your progress and a couple of you are already finished or almost finished with this new version. So I wanted to share these gorgeous options to inspire you. This one is a beautiful green and kind of neutral one and they used a mohair pop. So around, it was color D, their color D was a light mohair. And instead of light to dark, they went dark to light. So you could reverse your colors and start with the darkest color as color A in the center. And they use that mohair dare, a little mohair lace weight color. And you'll have this little skinny, thinner moment in the center. So you could use some mohair if you want or throw in an extra little mohair dare in addition to your four colors. And I worked out just a little simple math. So in this section that I drew out here and that's in your uh, version, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten total stripes 
10 total stripes in the recommended order. So you can arrange your colors that way. But if you wanna make smaller stripes or wider stripes or adding extra colors, there are 41 total garter ridges. So that's your opportunity within those 41 garter ridges. One garter ridge equals two rounds. So 41 garter ridges, how are you gonna divide those between your colors? You could do stripes every two ridges or every three ridges. So that might look something like this. You could do a color for two ridges, four rounds, and you'll have these two ridge stripes. And then maybe your next four rounds with the other color are in stockinette stitch. So if you don't wanna purl as much, you could do a little garter stitch and then a little stockinette stitch and then a little garter, a little stockinette and divide your colors that way. Just try to use your colors kind of equally, okay? It doesn't matter. I wouldn't use one color for the entire section, but yeah, use all your colors. If you use some colors more than others, it's totally fine. There's options at the end of the knit along to customize that final clue four so you don't run out of yarn. But this is an option of texture, some garter stitch or stockinette stitch. This is my slip extravaganza from years ago. And what if that center square had three garter ridges and then one stockinette uh, one stockinette stripe, a two row stockinette stripe. That could be really cool. You could do color A and then color B for the little stripe and then color C and then back to color B and then color D back to color B. A, little stripe with B. C, little stripe with B. D, little stripe with B or whatever color you wanna do. But I think that could be really cool if you don't want it like so wide and color blocked. But I love that modern like wide stripey version. This is another really beautiful dusty green and neutral version that really shows that like radiating center out. So, so simple. When in doubt, knit garter stitch, relax, set up the square. You got those 340 stitches, get through your clue one. It's always uh, a lot going on in the getting set up with the shawl. But uh, once you have that square with 340 stitches around the perimeter, you are good to go. So what are you gonna do to get to that 340 stitches? Are you gonna like make it in segments? I just wanna share one more picture because I'll link to this project down below because my friend Enos in Germany, she knitted this beautiful quadrant fragmented style. So these instructions aren't in the official PDF, but this is where y'all knitters start to get really creative. And I'm gonna link this down below if you wanna see Enos's notes on how she did this fragmented. I think it's really beautiful and it kind of goes along with that fragmentation style shawl that I did earlier this year and brings it into this new square radiating shape. So I, I'm really loving those juicy colors that she picked. Pink, surprise, surprise. Enos always knits pink, and that's why I love her. So I'm gonna link to that. All these versions you can see in the spoiler thread on Ravelry, so I hope you'll join me over there to get inspired with this new Clue One. And uh, there's an alternatives thread that's also linked down below. So as y'all post your versions, I'll keep adding to that alternatives thread and use that as like a little library for your creative alterations of this new version of Clue One. So again, I wanna thank you for participating. I wanna just keep going with this knit along and have a beautiful, supportive experience for you all. And uh, again, pop those, uh, any progress photos into the Ravelry MCAL 2023 group, linked down below. And we'll keep on knitting into Clue Two and it just gets better and better, okay? Don't worry too much about running out of yarn, all right? I've, I've got you covered. I got some great alternatives and some great uh, stop in early moments or options to keep on going to make your shawl as big and special as possible at the end. So I hope you love your colors. Always feel free to add in an extra spicy color pop. And as we grow with more sections, it's gonna become this really cool geometric geogradient collage of stitches, techniques, shapes. We don't know what's coming next, but I promise it's gonna go beautifully and smooth and you're gonna learn some fun new stitches and get inspired along the way. So thanks for joining and I'll see you in clue two.